So hey everybody, good evening and uh, we are having a fresh start and I assume that most of you are new to my classes and you are attending my sessions for the first time. There could be repeat audience as well. Monica Gupta, for instance, was there in my uh, quite a lot of classes, to be honest. She was my student a few years back, but then she keeps coming back whenever there is an online class. Um, yep. I, I Before we begin, there are certain customary... So, Ali Kadam, can you please, please mute yourself? You are constantly getting unmuted. Okay. So, some customary rules and regulations, first and foremost, before we get started with Please have your camera off unless I ask you to. Maybe towards the end we can have your cam on for a group photograph. Maybe if you have a query and you want everyone to notice you, you may feel free to open your cam. But otherwise, please have your cams off because the camera would extract more data from the fellow learners. So ideally, uh, it is advised that you turn your camera off and uh, keep your mic on mute. Unmute yourself when you have a query or when you have something to ask or refute and uh, maybe if you have uh, some permission to seek for, for that sake. So otherwise keep make sure that your mic is on mute. Yeah, to get started with, this is a streak offered by RC Cochin on MEG5, Literary Criticism and Theory. I assume I assume that most of you are first year learners for whom MAG5 is being made mandatory from the previous year admissions onwards. Prior to that, MAG5 used to be a paper in the second year. It was perhaps the, the structure used to be like there are four mandatory papers in the first year and only one mandatory paper and three optional papers in the second year. So that one mandatory paper in the second year used to be literary criticism and theory, MAG5. But based on the revisions a year, a year back, uh, it so happens that uh, yeah, uh, um, it, it is currently, I, I understand that it, it is part of the first year. And Subhadeep Mukherjee, this has been operated from RC Cochin, which is in Kerala, Kalur, Cochin, Kerala. So this these classes are provided by RC Cochin. We have five sessions this week, starting from today, which is a Monday. 21st of August 2023. We have it till this Friday. And the classes will be from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Again, formally, when I say formally, a couple of years back when the COVID pandemic uh, broke and uh, the classes started to be online. Okay, okay, please, please hold on. I'll come to all that. Relax, relax, relax. So, um, regarding the, yeah, uh, regarding the classes, a couple of years back, when this tradition of going online started in Igloo, thanks to the COVID pandemic, the classes were aired by RC Cochin. So either the RC Cochin staff or the faculty themselves had uh, started streaming the sessions, which meant that you had the leisure of joining as per your convenience. Your needs are also logical. Some of you may be working, some of you may be housewives, you would have a lot of things to take care of. So sometimes you may not be exactly able to join at 5 so that was accommodated over the last couple of years. But over the last two terms or so, this has been operated from uh, this has been operated from the study center part. So they may allow you a maximum of 15 minutes. So if you want to attend the classes, join at max by 545. But mostly it is advisable that you join exactly at 530, maybe 525 to 535 perhaps. So that's the pink peak time when you could log in and expect yourselves to be let in. Now, uh, there are quite a lot of queries flowing in. Please be patient. I'll not go without addressing any of your queries. So I was trying to tell you that we have class scheduled throughout this week, starting from today, from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. We'll have five sessions this week. And then we'll have a short break because autumn holidays happens uh, takes place in Kerala next week. So after that, in the first week of September, hopefully, we'll have a second streak of sessions on MAG5, wherein again we'll come back and uh, complete whatever is left and conclude our discussions. So there are 10 classes per se. A session consists of two hours. In our case, it's 5.30 to 7.30. So 5.30 to 6.30, 6.30 to 7.30. So that's a session. 
So we have 10 sessions. So before I begin, I have quite a lot of queries in the chat box. I can see that you're all eager. So let me just address one by one and then we'll, get ha we'll have a quick start. So Sonali Kadamji, I understand. I think you were there in my classes before as well. So in some cases, MEG5 happens in the second year. In some cases, it happens in the first year. Irrespective of that, the portions remain the same. The exam patterns remain the same. The assignments changes according to the year, but then uh, they're all somewhat similar. RC, I've already told you, this is being operated from RC Cochin, which is in Kalur, Kerala. And uh, classes are not available offline, but these classes are recorded and they are uploaded to the RC Cochin YouTube channel. If you, if you search RC Cochin in YouTube, you will find the formerly recorded classes, at least of MEG 2, 3 and 5. To my knowledge maybe 14 as well so that's available in uh, our youtube channel mapc that is psychology classes are also available in the rc coaching youtube link and uh, yes the classes will be from monday to friday this week and the recorded classes will be available it may take some time it's not like they'll be available immediately next week it may take a couple of months sometimes because there is an expert panel going through all our lectures and making sure there are no anomalies. There are no blasphemous uh, statements. There are no politically incorrect statements. There is nothing that goes against the uh, you know, laws of our country. So such screening does take place. Uh, the recordings are being scrutinized before they go on the public platform. So yes, that's there. It will take some time, but then it will be available in the YouTube platform. There are quite a lot of RCs who offer online classes on various subjects. If the timings do not clash, I would recommend you to go and access them. Uh, it would be really interesting and uh, your knowledge base would definitely benefit from it. And uh, if, if at all you miss certain classes, you can go back three to four months later and access it from YouTube. So even that is fine. But then if you, if you, if you uh, find me interesting or my lectures interesting, you are most welcome to be here. I have a specific way of taking classes. I try not to lecture, but rather I try to interact, bring in real life examples and make it relatable to you. If not interesting, I try to make it relatable to you, especially when it comes to literary criticism and theory, which is otherwise seen as a dry and dull subject. So we have to take it uh, that way only. All right. MEG 7 and MEG 10, again, it depends on who's available and uh, whether the study center is willing to do that as well. Again, one more fact as far as that is concerned is core papers, that is the papers that are deemed to be necessary, uh, would get all the 10 sessions, that is 20 hours of correspondence generally. Whereas complementary papers, their sessions would depend on how many students are there. So sometimes some, maybe let's say five to 10 students would have opted for a paper. Let's say something like MEG 16, Indian Folk Literature. So sometimes people may not opt for that. So if there are no learners, then there won't be uh, 10 sessions for that. There would be a bare minimum two to three sessions, introductory sessions, uh, guiding the learners on how to approach the paper. Sometimes there won't be academic counselors available for a particular paper. So then you won't get the class at all for a particular paper. Assignment solution may also be taken care of uh, depending on uh, the time, because again, it, it is quite a vast area. We generally try to focus on MEG assignment questions, but ever since the online classes have commenced, it so happens that the online classes are arranged a little bit late. When I say late, uh, by the time your assignment submission dates are due. So most of the learners prefer an exam oriented approach, wherein we would be able to cover certain areas, which would be useful for you from an examination perspective. So I'll try to accommodate as much as possible. But before we begin, a few more disclaimers. Disclaimers because these are certain things which we get to hear time and again. And uh, I just want to be clear before we begin. As, I mean, in IGNU, we are called as academic counselors. You may still call us sir, you may still call us teacher or professor, but then our tag is uh, academic counselor. So the basic thing is that unlike the teachers in the regular mode, we don't get to teach you for an entire year. We just get you for 20 hours maximum. There are times when we would get you only for six to eight hours. So we get 
to teach you or interact with you for 20 hours. And uh, needless to say, it is impossible to answer uh, to, 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 to complete all the portions in 20 hours. It's practically impossible. So I always begin my classes by putting this disclaimer that do not expect us to complete the portions or to cover all the topics that is listed in your blocks or syllabus. We may pick and choose certain topics which are of, of relevance or significance, especially from an examination or assignment point of view, and we would deal with it. That's what we generally do. And uh, yes, uh, Paramji, I'm coming to that uh, before proceeding further. Um, somebody spoke about having been in my classes and liking my sessions. So generally, my classes are arranged in this particular pattern. The class begins at 5.30. Initial 5 to 10 minutes goes on recapping and just having some gupshaps. That's not to waste 10 minutes of time. But then that's just to make sure that others who are late also get the time to chip in. And let's say 5.35, 5.40 onwards, we'll get started with the topics. It sometimes may be random or it's, it may sometimes be organized and synchronized. It may have a chronological pattern depending on which area we are covering or dealing with. It may also be motivated by suggestions or questions from your end. Let's say by the end of today, you are asking me a few questions regarding a particular stream. And I come back tomorrow and address that first before proceeding to anything else. So that also happens. And uh, generally, I try to divide the topics into two halves. So I'll have a session from 5.35 to 6.30. Then I'll again have a topic from 6.30 to 7.20. And the last 10 minutes would generally be for the open forum or Q&A or doubts or whatever you call it. So we'll always have scope for discussion over the last 10 minutes. I try to ensure that I, I could contribute to your greater life or livelihood. I, I am really adamant that this doesn't end here in five or 10 days, but then I would, I would definitely like to spend some time on making you better learners and appreciators of English literature. Regarding how to score more, uh, two or three of you have asked that already. There are 10 sessions. So I, I request you to be patient. I'll address all these things. Generally, my last class would be regarding how to appear for the exam, how to attend certain questions, how to score better marks. So please be patient, attend all the classes time and again, you will get the answer. Don't worry. I'm not gonna get it started today because that will be a severe digression straight away. Unless and until you know certain things, <laughs> yeah, so these are questions that I, I really know. I, I understand uh, your stress, tension and anxiety. But let me be sure, let me, let, me, let me just assure you that please be patient with me. Just listen to me. Lend me your ears. Yeah, somebody said that, right? Lend me your ears. So lend me your ears for 10 sessions, 5 sessions this week, 5 in the week after the week. So uh, I'm sure by then you would get an idea of how these things are and you yourself discover how to uh, prepare for your exams, what to study, what not to study. And uh, there are no, you know, absolutely sure hit questions and uh, you can miss this portion. There's nothing like that. Everything is equally important. But how do you approach that? And how do you uh, dedicate your time to each and every block is something that we can definitely figure out in the process. Uh, how will we write answer to score good marks in particular MEG5? It'll be helpful. It's fortifying to reappear in exam. Okay, which, which chapters are more important, which cannot skip for exam? Are there any specific books except the study materials we should go for? Okay, Kumari Smigda. My today's lecture is an introductory one and I shall definitely talk to you about all those things in a short while. Be assured that I'll cover all these things. All right, so let's get the day started. And as we get the day started, let me begin with a question. As I told you, mine is not a lecture. I love interactions as much as I love uh, anything else. So let me begin with the question. What exactly is MEG5 all about? Have you gone through the blocks? Have you gone through the topics? How do you find MEG5? Let me hear your inputs first before I begin. How are you finding MEG5? How easy or how difficult are you finding MEG5 to? <laughs> yeah, quite a lot of dates to memorize. Is it only about dates to memorize? Hello, and sir. Yes, Santosh. Go on. Sir, uh, I feel that uh, 
MEG5 requires uh, prior knowledge of uh, uh, literature, like uh, British literature, the different stages of uh, literature. You need some prior uh, knowledge before going into it. So you can't directly start it uh, like other subjects like MEG7, 10, 14. So some prior uh, foundation is required. And you have uh -huh. to go deep into the topic. OK. Good observation. Thank you for that. Yes, Yukta ji, go on. Uh, so I've gone through the blocks. And uh, what I saw is there is a theories. And to explain those theories, they reference to some of uh, they give reference to the poets and uh, other uh, uh, dramatists. So for mm -hmm. that, you have to uh, like gone through to their lives and their works. So it's uh, quite confusing for me that I have not read their works. So it is okay. not, I I won't be able to connect the theory and their works like how they both relate to each other. So yeah, in that way, I find it a uh, difficult. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excuse me. Yes, please, Paramji. Go on. Up, uh, I, I feel up to new criticism, it is somewhat logical, somewhat lo logical, and we can <laughs> understand the idea. After that, we become totally confused, and you know that uh, that idea become very blurred, and the demarcation between different theories <laughs> become very, very blurred <laughs> and uh, very confusing. Okay, okay. Before proceeding and giving others an opportunity to voice what you feel, let me just add something to what Paramji has said. Okay. Uh, Paramji, there could be different answers to what you said. I mean, explanations as to why things are seemingly easy up until new criticism and why it gets complicated after that. But then let me just add one suggestive uh, insight into that up until new criticism and post new criticism, the historical differences account a lot to it. The scientific advancement, the tug of war between religion and science, the amount of wars that the world is surrounded with, the sort of an existentialist angst that looms large in most of the modern societies have all coupled into contributing to these uh, bizarre theories that you come across. So equally you become puzzled or startled. For instance, for example, when you read postmodernism as a theory, you find it really baffling. Because generally, the moment you think about a story, you think about a proper beginning, climax, uh, a middle part, and a climax. So there is this five parts that Hudson speaks about. But the moment you come to a postmodern narrative, all these things are questioned, challenged, thwarted, and you come across stories where there are no titles, there are no pages, there are no endings. Exactly. Right? So, so that's what adds to your confusion. But our contemporary world is as chaotic as it is. So the chaotic theories and the chaotic real life are equally running on parallel. Just a yes. reference, all right? I'll come back to that okay. sometime later. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Gargi Goralji, uh, that's one man, one fact that I always like to address whenever I deal with MEG5. A lot of people, a lot of students of literature find literary criticism and theory dull and boring. They hate literary criticism and theory second only to linguistics and phonetics or grammar perhaps if, if you can have a hierarchy students hate grammar students hate linguistics and phonetics and then they absolutely disregard literary criticism and theory but i would give its discredit to teachers and a major share of them a 90 95 percentage of them who have tried to teach theory not to learn theory or its practical aspects. That's why you have a book by I.A. Richards titled Practical Criticism. Criticism is incomplete without its practice. If you can't relate to your day-to-day -day life, if you can't apply it in your day-to-day -day life, then it definitely becomes boring. You're like, Chalo, why are we studying this? Faltu se, right? So that's something that happens. So in my lectures, the limited lectures that I deal with, I try to make sense into these theories. And I try to make it interesting as much as I can. I try to bring in these analogies which would make it relatable to your day-to-day -day life. So would anyone else like to chip in with your inputs regarding MEG5? How's, how's your experience been so far? Uh, sir, I have been uh, 
phone through the uh, papers but i'm new mm-hmm. to this uh, ma english i was into mass communication only so when mm-hmm. i uh, open the book it is so horrifying that i am extremely i'm i'm very confused okay i don't know hmm. i i can understand uh, ever since i started teaching in igno i think it was way back in 2014 15 when i started teaching in rc kochi offline classes that is ever since i started doing that unlike in the regular stream uh, i get across or i come across a variety of learners not only in terms of their age but also in terms of their qualification there are learners who choose ma english from ignu after doing let's say bsc physics or ba economics or journalism and mass communication that is without any proper literature background there are learners who come to take ma literature probably thinking it's all about stories and they end up suffering <laughs> because of it but trust me but trust me it's not that difficult uh, kamalakshi ji kamalakshi ji do you have a question your mic is on mute kamalakshi ji okay i think that is by mistake this is something i was warning you about please don't let us hear your private conversations if you have a query feel free to unmute and speak yes so there are people with b em tech and ba economics and so many other stuff who have joined ma literature but let me let me let me really reassure you this is not a hard nut to crack if you can do b tech and em tech english literature is really easy it's just that you need to be aware of the methodology it is the methodology that would take you forward so i'll try to help you no need to be sorry kamalakshi ji that's that happens you don't i think i don't think anybody deliberately does that so that's totally fine hota hai but please be careful because sometimes we get to hear a lot of bizarre things which we don't want to hear as learners out here yeah okay so what i was trying to tell you is that uh, there are different types of learners who come to igno to deal with mag and uh, what you need is a proper methodology to deal with it i'll come to that a few a little while later i'll come to the sources which you could depend on you know to have the basics right for the time being let me stick to your mg5 experiences would anyone else like to add to something sir i would like to add something good evening yes go uh, ahead selman ji please uh, yes yes uh, what i actually felt uh, was that sir if we go across the first few um, units of the first block initially mm-hmm. there are some of the uh, languages or the type of uh, the words that are used for any beginner it uh, seems to be little bit difficult but as we go across those uh, literary theories and explanations over the uh, blocks it becomes slightly easier one more thing is that okay. what i felt while i was um, reading across the next five blocks was that it depends on many of the concepts and uh, many visual techniques if it's possible it's not only bookish we always think that we always have to learn certain things here criticism and literary theory is also about understanding that concept that what they are trying to tell if we get to know about that crux then we can automatically frame it might be for the beginning it would be slightly difficult it's not that easy to frame a answer material from the day one but immediately when we do it in step wise portion or be it in a consistent wise uh, thing it would be a little bit more easier that's what i feel sir all right good good relevant observations selman ji thank you for that i can take two more two more observations and then we'll continue let me hear a few more of you as well your mg5 experience you can feel free yeah. to open up and say i haven't opened my blocks yet this is a platform so i agree with be... selman sir actually mm-hmm. i felt the same when I, when i started with mg and of course i didn't start with our uh, igno's labels book i started uh, with peter barry <laughs> and initially i found it very difficult i mean i was not aware of the authors of or the critics mentioned in the book so initially yeah, i found it difficult then i went to pramod nayar's book and uh, of course there were so many lectures from different <laughs> centers so now i find it very interesting like yes that in the beginning it was a little hard to you know uh, uh hard got to crack but they were in for that all right that point is noted thank you preeti ji bhavana ji before coming to you let me just ask 
the fine art what exactly is your name if i may know because i am seeing you is kita actually i am Sorry, an I artist you. that's your why your name is arpita 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 yes sir okay sir Hi, actually i am an artist from 5 years old that's why that's great that's totally fine so arpita ji uh, i understand that this baby your first online course and it's natural for you to feel that you are lagging behind but let me tell you this is not a rocket science you can easily crack this if you especially you are an artist you are a creative soul so what is it that a creative soul cannot conquer in this world right so this would really become easier i i, I really hope my lectures would help you uh, have a better clarity actually actually sir, actually sir i i want to give pgt exams that's why doing because i am only allowed to tgt that's why i understand i understand i totally understand thank you bhavana ji i think you have a query bhavana badoria Uh, sir i would just like to add on to like uh, what everybody has said uh, regarding the subject initially when i when i even started i even felt the same thing as everyone felt that it's a more you know like technical sort of a subject rather than a theory subject it felt so but yes of course you know like uh, my suggestion to everyone would be which i even did it uh, as in like when we are attending the class before that we have to actually go through the content then only that we'll be able to make that you know like connect with the subject because i attended earlier classes also wherein you know like the class was i was not at all able to you know like connect anything to what the teacher was teaching us but yes of course when i had gone through the content yes of course i am i i think that would be quite helpful in your class as well so that would be a suggestion uh, that going through the content is really more important when we come up to mg 5 so that that is that is a that is a point worth uploading bhavana ji because more often than not yes. learners fall apart in this regard because they expect us to come and give a diluted version of all that's there in the blogs and they do not do the other part which is to uh, read that simultaneously if not before at at least simultaneously if if you listen to my lecture today and if you go back and read what i discussed it would be more effective i suppose if you cannot if you, if you cannot pre read it at least read it after the lecture so in that case let's slowly 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 get started uh, with a paper mg5 literary criticism and theory i come to the subject proper tomorrow only so what would i discuss today all these queries that you have in your mind all these fears that you have in your mind i'll address that one by one in the next one hour but before doing that let me just give you a few things to go back and have a look at what we call in a school days as homework right so you have this interesting title for this paper called literary criticism and literary here is that the one and the same or are they two different things you may simply do a google search a basic fundamental google search and make your observations so i'm trying to tell you the dichotomy or the difference between literary criticism and literary theory is something that you must be aware of so when we began this discussion today i don't exactly remember the name but somebody told initially that uh, one problem that he finds is that he has to be aware of the uh, history of english literature before trying to delve deep into literary criticism and literary theory i had posted the same in the comment box as well but i beg to differ yes a basic understanding of history of english language and literature would help you proceed further in mg but then literary criticism and literary theory to be very honest has nothing to do with english language and literature i'm not sure how many of you are aware of this having gone through our blogs let me just list a few names let me just list a few names and maybe you will have a rethinking okay. i'm just giving you a few names that you may very well be familiar with all right just in case you're not familiar go back to your blog these people are there right there Yeah, look at the list. I've given you the names: Aristotle, Longinus, Plato, Horace. 
Then you have Sigmund Freud, Claude Levi Strauss, Jacques Derrida, Roland Barth. Who are they? Let me just go back to these names. Aristotle, Longinus, Plato, Horace, Sigmund Freud, Claude Levi Strauss, Jacques Derrida, Roland Barth. They belong to, they may be philosophers, they may be writers like T.S. Eliot, for instance, they may be critics, but then they do, they are not British, they are not English to be more precise. Aristotle, Plato, and all are Greek. Horace is Roman. Jacques Derrida, Roland Barthes, and all are French. Now, tell me, how are we reading these people and their theories? I hope I'm clear. Forget Aristotle. Let me just bring to the modern context. Roland Barthes and Jacques Derrida are French philosophers. We, in our class, or for that sake, Sir, uh, the Ferdinand de Saussure. Ferdinand de Saussure is a Swiss linguist. So we read a Swiss man, we read Frenchmen in English literary criticism, not English, no, but in literary criticism and theory. And we often overlook the fact that these people are not English. So how do we come across these people? How do we come across these people, my dears? How do we come across these people? Yes, Yuktaji. So, uh, being a student of uh, bachelor's in education, so uh, all of uh, the writers, you writers or philosophers, you wrote their name. I only know about Sigmund Freud because I have studied his uh, theory called uh, psychosexual analytical theory. So uh, why I'm referring to his theory is that when we read it, what we read context? Mein padha? Actually, we are exploring the child psychology. For that, we have to refer to their uh, criticism or you can say that theory. So when we are exposed to theory, hote hai, toh, we really need a context. So I think that yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Let's let's not digress. That point is taken, but my question is not that. My question is the reader or Barth, in which language would they have written or spoken? Or let me make it very simple. Let's say if 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 Yukta Sharma was a theorist from India. What is the language in which Yukta Sharma writes or speaks? It's in Hindi. my native language? It's Hindi, right? Assumedly, it's in Hindi, right? So if, let's say 10, 20 years later, a student of English literature comes across Yukta Sharma's theories in English, does Yukta Sharma have any connection with English? Let's forget that she is part of MEG. Okay? Does she have any connect with English? No. So we come across different philosophers or different people from different branches. For instance, Sigmund Freud, like you said, or Claude Levi Strauss, belong to psychoanalytics. They have nothing to do with literature. Roland Barthes or Jacques Derrida are all philosophers and Frenchmen in particular. They wrote or spoke in French. So how do we come to learn or read them? We come across all these theorists because something exists over the ages called translation. That exactly is what MEG 14 is for you. We read these people in translation. All right, let me give you five minutes of magic. For those who say literary criticism and theory is boring, let me just digress for a while. It's an interesting word, digress, right? Digress is when you move away from the topic. I'm not talking about MEG5 per se. I'm actually digressing over the last one hour or so. And I'm going to talk about the topic. And I'm saying I'm going to digress. That's the funny part of it. Okay, so let me just bring in a five minutes magic. 
if you have done your degree in english language and literature if you are familiar with ferdinand de saussure and jacques the reader you may have come across their concepts can someone open up about the three popular concepts that saussure has put forth anybody yes go on please unmute yourself yes yes sir i will try i will definitely like to try but uh, let's see um for the for the nd saucer had uh, three concepts that he told about he talked about he was a swiss linguist who talks about in his book goose the linguistica generally um mm -hmm. that he talked about uh, signifier and the signified that's the sign uh, that's the yes. three or tracks that is one signifier part signifier and signified yes and uh, the second part is the long and the parole i hope that i have pronounced it right yes, yes, because yes, yes, there yes, might be some difference yes and plus plus there are some um, uh, more things that are there like uh, syntagmatic paradigmatic these terms are also there yes 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 and uh, apart from that there are some more modifications things there are some different uh, structuralists as well like the american structuralists if i am not wrong so there are some different structuralists but fordnan de saussure had uh, a, a great uh, uh, impact on the linguistics and the sign uh, thing so he has a very wide range of things that he had uh, uh, portrayed in his books the course the linguistic generally so that's what i i can contribute sir okay thank you salman i think uh, the concepts are quite clear to all of you when he says this uh, maybe much better than how i would have explained this but then let me let me just reposition whatever salman has tried to say and that's where i would like you to think that's my first statement before teaching literary criticism and theory to be precise i'll explain these concepts don't worry anybody who's not aware of these concepts i'll be briefing it right now in the next 5 minutes but i'll also take it when we have time sometime over the next week don't worry i'm not going to uh, keep quiet about these topics these are all really interesting and if you read them in the blocks you may find it confusing but then i'll try to make it as interesting as possible for you that's what i'm trying to do that's, that's why i said let me add some magic for the next 5 minutes so i'll do that but before doing that let me just go back to one principal thing i forgot before before starting literary criticism and theory i'd like to add one thing i already said that if you try to study literary criticism and theory it's always going to be boring it's going to be dull you may get confused this becomes a massive hit only when you look at its practical aspects in mahatma gandhi university kerala as per the cbcs syllabus for the ma students of english there is this paper on theory and the paper is titled thinking theory my own teacher dr shri jacob from union christian college alwa had framed that entire paper and that exactly is the crux of how you should approach this paper thinking theory if you cannot think what the theory is about why is it about if you cannot question that then there is no point in reading this you may mug up things and try to pass you may pass i'm not denying that but in your life there is no point in studying this paper if you can't learn its practicalities in your day to day life okay so coming back talking about ferdinand de saussure the three major concepts that he put forward yes there are the other ones but then three major concepts that he put forward are of the sign the signifier and the signified right before explaining those three concepts let me again go back to something salman said it's not that only salman says this if you go and get a book on linguistics that that book may also sometimes erroneously say this it will say that ferdinand de saussure was a swiss linguist who wrote cours de linguistic generale in 1916 which is actually not true ferdinand de saussure never wrote something called cours de general linguistics or linguistics generale rather what happened to him is a dream of any teacher who is experimental who works on educational pedagogy anybody who tries to bring something new who works in a challenging work environment every teacher including me would dream of the gift that sosho was bestowed with exactly 
Coastly Linguistics General, published in 1916, posthumously, which means after Sosho's death, was a collection of Sosho's lectures on linguistics. I hope I'm not confusing you. Coastly General Linguistics was a collection of Sosho's classroom lectures about his experiments on language by his own students after his death. Now that accounts to the amount of confusions that you have while going through those concepts. Like when I try to explain a concept, my age, my experience, my intellect may be at a particular position and you may have your own deficiencies and you're trying to figure it out within those limitations. So when you try to copy down and take notes on what I say, there could be quite a lot of errors. I would say Ferdinand de Saussure and you may end up writing Ferdinand de Saussure, S-A-U-C-E-R, with which you drink you know, the cup and the saucer. It happens, there are quite a lot of students who write like that. So Saussure so students, having taken lecture notes, came up with this book called Coast de Linguistics General after his death. Saussure so never wrote that book. And again, there is this popular tagline that goes with Saussure. He is the father of? The linguist. Yeah, a word is missing. Can you add, can somebody add that? He is the father of dash linguistics. English. I know. No, 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 not English. Father of English. It's not so true. Oh, that a goes to Jeffrey Chaucer. Yeah, that goes to Chaucer. That goes to Jeffrey Chaucer. Father of modern English literature. Yes. So sure, is regarded as the father of modern linguistics. And uh, yeah, the fine art. The cup was actually gifted to me by a friend of mine. Uh, my birthday was on the 2nd of August. And a friend of mine had gifted me because I'm a coffee person. All right, let's not digress that way around. Coming back to Sosur, Sosur is regarded as the father of modern linguistics. So when you study English literature, you may come across quite a lot of fathers on various branches. But we forget to ask what existed before that. Let me just add two answers here before we proceed, before we come back to science signifier signified. We call Geoffrey Chaucer the father of modern English literature. Why do we call him the father of modern English literature? Why because do we call made, Jeffrey Chaucer? Yes, go on. Because he made the dialect a language. I mean, he was... Which, which dialect? Which dialect? Let's be precise. Mid, mid, so Midland dialect. Which Midland? Which Midland? East Midland, yes, spot on. So he made the East Midland dialect popular, which later became standardized English format or accepted as standard English. Also, in 1478, which is another landmark year, a man called William Caxton invented, invented what? Printing press, sir, printing press. The printing press, the printing press. So William Caxton invented the printing press. Geoffrey Chaucer's works, which are noted today, became popular or its popularity owes a lot to the, the advent of the printing press. Now let me let me give you a gross example. It's a, it's a bit gross, but then I have to be point blank about that. Who is a father? It is an ugly joke though, but then who is a father? A father is someone whom you can point out to. This is my father, right? Prior to Chaucer, because printing press doesn't exist or didn't exist. And also because over the times, most of the works have been lost due to, due to deluge, due to flood, due to fires, due to excavations, wars, and a lot of other things. We have no idea about authors before Chaucer. We hear about a few classics. We hear about Beowulf. We hear about Cinewulf and a lot of such works. But then the first notable author that we come across is Geoffrey Chaucer, 
because his name is in print. So that pointability, that showability is what makes Geoffrey Chaucer the father of modern English literature. Now let's come back to Saussure. If Saussure is the father of modern linguistics, what preceded linguistics? Or to be more simple, what existed before linguistics? That's how you think theory. Rather than mugging up Ferdinand Saussure was the father of modern linguistics, blah, 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 blah. Science signifier signified, pragmatic, dynamic, blah, 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 log and parole. No. Stop. Think. If he is the father of modern linguistics, what existed prior to that? Again, the clues in the question. Because Saussure was a teacher of that branch, which he killed. Isn't that a paradox? A wonderful paradox? Saussure killed what he taught. There was this branch of language that existed called philology. You can go back and Google if you want. There was this thing called philology. Saussure was a teacher of philology. And in his classes, he interacted with learners just like the way I do with you. And he spoke to them excitedly about his research experiments on language, especially the meaning of language or the meaning production process of language. And that later become, became course de linguistics general. Okay, coming back to the three major concepts. I'm talking about Ferdinand D. Saussure. Okay. So three major concepts of Saussure are sign, signifier, and signified. I keep the explanations for another date. There are quite a lot of things, including long paroles, syntomatic, paradigmatic associations to be discussed. But then for a, for a very brief magical interpretation, Saussure says that the moment I say the word tree, a corresponding tree image comes to our mind. I hope this is very clear to you. The moment I say tree, T-R-E-E, -E, paid. All of you, according to Sushore, are thinking about a tree. Agreed? Yes. yes. So this was a structuralist thing propounded by Ferdinand de Sushore. He tried to emphasize on the arbitrariness of meaning. And then he speaks about how a collective psyche is framed when a, a meaning, in, in terms of a meaning production. And Saussure argued that within the communities, that's where long and parole comes in, within the communities, we can have agreeable terms for certain things. For instance, supposing you are Jan 2023 batch, okay, and we are having our online class, and we decide to call the fan in my room as a donkey. And suppose this is an offline classroom. And every time you step in, I say, Yukta, can you please turn on the donkey for us? It's so hot here. Or Paramji, can you please turn, turn off the donkey? Because we are feeling so cold here. Let's say one year later, six months later, within our class, donkey would signify fan. Sir, donkey? sir actually, yes, actually, I, I, am, I am seeing an image that a donkey is hanging upon my fan. <laughs> that's the artist in you that's a creative artist in you spot on I'm, I'm not at all shocked by that I am waiting for that moment when you would probably draw that hanging donkey in the fan and maybe yes, speak share and show it to us in the class Within five that would minutes. be amazing that would definitely be amazing but no don't do it now please listen to me I still have a good 45-50 minutes so please lend me your ears you may do that after 7.30 that would be appreciated. Okay, let me come back. So <clears throat> if we, let's say, collectively decide to call a bench a desk and a desk a bench, for us, a bench is a desk and a desk is a bench. This is Saussure's terminology. But then when the post-structuralist era began, Jacques Derrida contested or challenged 
Sosurian notions. Because fundamentally, Sosurian concepts had, were handicapped or they had problems that needed to be addressed. There is this popular example that I always bring into my classes. For instance, when I say the word Zen, what comes to your mind? What is the corresponding image that your mind draws from? The currency. Okay. A Buddhist monk. Okay. See, there is no one. The name of a here. car. Yeah, the name of a car. Maybe adjectives related to that Zen Buddhism. Fair enough. Superlatives. There is also something called Zen phone. I'm not sure how many of you have heard that. So a singular word brings in multiple associations based on where you belong. to. And if you are a Persian, somebody who knows Persian language, in the Persian language, the word Zen means mother. Ma, Amma. And it is Derrida who problematizes this syntagmatic, syntagmatic relation of the meaning formation and who asks this principal question. When I say mother, forget Zen, when I say mother, what is coming into your mind? What corresponding image is drawn to your mind? Who comes to your mind, darlings? My when mother. When I say mother, precisely. Also so the problem the here is, of the mother. Yeah. So the problem the here is, of the mother in the air. Yeah. So the problem here is that same, the, the image created by that single word in my mind is not the same as in Yukta's mind. Is definitely different in the mind of Param. Is different in the mind of Preetiji or uh, in Santosh. So the same word evokes different meanings or different images, corresponding images. And again, when we try to be monotonous about these images that comes to our mind, also spare a moment of thought for the exceptions. Think of an orphan who was brought in a brought up in a congregation. We call them sisters, right? The nuns, we call them as sisters. Imagine, that's, that's, that's where Derrida makes fun of the vocabulary meaning formation. Imagine a girl child or a boy child brought up in a convent, remembering the head nun or the head priest who's called sister, sister Teresa, sister Agnes or whatever. The moment the sir says mother, this orphan child thinks of the sister superior, who to her is the mother. So imagine where the word, how the meaning of the word mother goes for a toss. That is the immense potential that every language contains. And this, the reader, this formation of uh, meaning in words, the reader calls as de France. Or so a lot of people write in their books. They say the reader says meaning is deferred and deferred. And he uses the word de France. It's a portmanteau word. Defer plus defer becomes de France. Right? But again, this is not a term coined by the reader. Bhavanaji, I think you are mute. You are on unmute. Bhavanaji? Alright. So, the reader has never used the word de France. Rather, in French language, he has only hinted on this, this derail and differentiated meaning formations. It was his translator from French to English, whom you may also know to have coined the term subalternity through her, famous, through her famous work, Can the Subaltern Speak? 
none other than Gayatri Chakravarti Spivak. So it was Spivak who translated most of the Rida's work, including uh, of grammatology. So it was Spivak, again, because she had such great vocabulary and she was a punster. She thought, okay, in English, we have two resonant words, differ and defer. So why not blend them and coin a term called de France? And thus, the concept of Derida uh, derives a word in English called de France. There are quite a lot of learners who falsely attribute it to Derida. But no, de France is a term coined by her as translator, uh, Spivak, Gaita Chakravarti Spivak. I said five minutes of magic, but I think I took 15 minutes. But I hope now theory is getting interesting to you. This is how we relate theory to our day-to-day -day life. This is how we bring forth the associations and try to connect and try to imbibe and try to learn from what we come across these blocks. All right. And yeah, so we have, okay, okay. let me quickly move on to some resources. Rather than continuing with these things, let me just speak. Okay, uh, so talking about MEG5, there are eight blocks that you would come across. And the first block deals with introduction, literary criticism and theory, Indian aesthetics, function of criticism, and so on. Block two deals with classical criticism, Aristotle, Plato, Longinus, Horace, and so on and so forth. Block three with romantic criticism, William Wordsworth, Coleridge, Percy Bysshe Shelley. Block four with new criticism of I.A. Richards, T.S. Eliot, F.R. Lewis, John Crow Ransom, Cleant Brooks, Wimsatt, and Beardsley. Quite a long list, but new criticism is really exciting as somebody pointed out. It's, it's straightforward. You can easily learn that and by heart it will maybe score some good marks. Good chunk of marks perhaps. Then comes Marxist view of literature. So you have an entire block five on the Marxian theories of the proletariat and the working class, base, superstructure, and so on and so forth. There are quite a lot of learners who love to skip block five because for them block five is too boring and dull and difficult to understand. Also because they hate Marxism perhaps. So because somebody asked me what to you know skip, I just remember that quite a lot of my learners skip block five. Well, I would reserve my comments for a later occasion. Block 6 deals with feminist theories, starting from Mary Wollstonecraft, Virginia Woolf, Simone de Bouvier, Elaine Showalter, Showalter, and so on and so forth. I may spend an entire day discussing feminist theories in the second leg of our sessions. So would I in terms of post-colonial literature as well as deconstruction. The pioneer of deconstruction, needless to say, Jacques Derrida. Then, talking about contemporary literary theory, we have postmodernism, psychoanalysis, postcolonial post -colonial theories of Said, Spivak, Baba, and so on. And then, cultural studies and new historicism. So, as I already said, it would be impossible to cover all the eight blocks and cover all these topics, but we'll try to put in our hands as and when and where our time permits us to. So this is a brief overview of your syllabus, which you may already be aware of or familiar with. I would also like to take your attention to a few sources which you may be interested in. Okay, let me share my screen. Oh, before that, okay, let me also give you a five minute lecture on how to approach this paper or MEG in particular. Someone pointed out to me that reading the blocks are quite boring or there are intertextual references which you are not aware of and without that awareness you can't proceed further or have a proper understanding of that. So more often than not my students come back to me and they ask me what to read and how to read. Often my learners are perplexed by the sight of the blocks or the original texts for that sake. A lot of the traditional teachers would beg to differ from my point of view in this regard. And they may insist that you go to the, go and read the original texts. They may not even recommend reading the blocks of Eagle. They would say if there is T.S. Eliot, 
traditional individual talent, go read the entire essay. If you have to read New Criticism, go read the entire book titled New Criticism by John Crow Ransom. If you want to read Freud, read all the books written by Freud on his experiments. Well, this is a good suggestion, no two ways about it. But in this era, how realistic is it is something that we need to fact check. Not only because we have too many things to read and too little time to read, it is also coupled with our inabilities. I'm not saying disabilities. I have choice or preferred the word inabilities. Maybe because our language is not as good as T.S. Eliot's. Our language is not competent enough to read um, the reader. Or maybe our grammar doesn't allow us to go beyond uh, some basic books in English literature. So we have to be practical. And we have to address issues as it is. First of all, we have to identify where we stand, where our language stands. More often, most often I tell my learners, if you think your English is terrible, I repeat, if you think your English is terrible, you can't even write a single sentence without mixing up is and was. And you have opted MA English Literature. A traditional teacher would say, God be with you. No one can save you from drowning. But I would rather put it in a different plane altogether. And I would tell you, go read illustrated classics in the World Wide Web or in most of the libraries around you. You would come across something called illustrated classics. primary thing that would come to your mind is books like Chanda Mama, Twinkle, Balarama, Balabhumi, Kalikuduka and so on and so forth. I'm not asking you to read children's fiction per se, but then there are quite a lot of illustrated classics when it comes to literature. I hope you understand what I mean. There are quite a lot of books that come with an illustrated narrative. One such series that I can suggest is the manga edition from Japan. It includes almost all the tragedies of William Shakespeare in illustrated format. So let's say if you have opted MEG2 and are struggling to figure out the story of Hamlet, go read a manga classic on Hamlet and maybe you would understand that better. Or there are, when it comes to literary theory, I'll, I'll, I'll expose you to those books later. There is this series called a literature book. Illustrated classics on various theories, including feminism or post-structuralism, post-modernism, new criticism. I'll definitely make you say hi to them sometime this week. But then I'm just saying there is a series of literature books which are in illustrated format. So if you're not able to read the blocks, if you find them boring, read something interesting. When you study literature, you are feeding your soul. Remember that always. Whatever you study, for example, you are intellectually stimulating yourself. You are trying to add to your knowledge base. It will never materialize if you are reading a dull, boring hypertext. So go find what excites you. If it's an illustrated classics, well and good. If it's a YouTube video, much the better. Who is going to assess you if it's not you? Who is going to appreciate you if it's not you? Who is going to stand up for you if it's not you? Who can you count upon if it's not you? My dear fellow learners, Mark these words in golden letters. Compete with yourself. Never mind what your fellow learner is doing, what your friend is doing. 
Don't look at what Salman is speaking. Don't look at what Param is saying. Don't look at what Yukta Sharma is doing. Don't look at Preeti Agarwal's box. Compete with yourself. If you look at the study materials and you think, Are, main to isme bas 40 mark mushkil se bana If you think you will get only 40 out of 100 for MEG 5, work on it. Aim for 60. Score 50. Be happy. That is a commendable achievement. You who assessed yourself to be in 40s have gone up to 50. It requires a huge round of applause. Preeti Agarwal would have scored 85. It's none of your business. You are competing with yourself. You have a pace that is your own. Sometimes you may take 45 years to master the language. Someone would do it in 15 years. So do not be baffled or do not panic by these show-offs. Do not pay heed to these things. Hey, come on, you are here to learn, not study. The moment you change your brain's wiring into learning from studying, it becomes exciting. The moment it becomes exciting, you are feeding your soul. Right? Hunger leads you to places. So you are feeding your soul. You want to read more. You want to explore more. You want to discover more. And it becomes exciting. Try this. I'm sure by the end of our session, you would love literary criticism already, hopefully. And by the time you try this, you would, you would be able to appreciate this even better. So go find resources that appeal to you. Let it be a YouTube video. Let it be a podcast. Let it be a PDF. Let it be... Um, an illustrated classic. It's totally fine. So let me just quickly share my screen and I'll show you a few more things. In the middle of that, people keep messaging. In the previous college, I make five line code from the topic. Yeah, he, he, that's up to you. Right? See, you, you feed your soul. You feed your creativity. Uh, you feed your thirst. Only you can do that. Again, allow me a minute of digression because you seem to be quite excited by what I say. So let me just add to that excitement. I happened to listen to the former UGC chairman, Dr. Ved Pragash. It was a delightful lecture. He taunted us. It was a lecture exclusively for the teachers of literature. And he taunted us. He actually abused us. Abuse is the wrong word, but then he kind of taunted all of us, saying you're all useless fellows. He had a rationale behind that. He asked us, every year, there are tens and thousands of students graduating and post-graduating in English literature. In English literature. How many Indian English authors have you created? How many writers have you teachers created in India? It's a question that Dr. Ved Pragash asked us. Trust me, that question still haunts me. When I say, I was able to bring out two anthologies with my pan-Indian Igno audience. That is a tribute I paid to Dr. Ved Pradesh. At least I could bring out two anthologies on translation. Tens and millions of students graduating and post-graduating in MA English literature do not know even to write a proper sentence in English. Can't speak for five minutes in English. Forget writing four lines of poetry. Shame. Absolute shame. That the academy is breeding. And it is in that footing that I'm telling you, compete with yourself. Work on your strengths. Try to overcome your weaknesses. Try to enjoy what you do. If you do not enjoy what you do, either you are in the wrong ship or wrong boat or the materials that you're depending on is not the right one. Switch over to the next one. Now, let me very quickly take you through a few resources which I'm sure you would find to be interesting. So if you are a read, write learner, if you like to read, and if you need summaries, apart from the blogs, this is a page called EPG Partshala, InfluentNet server. I hope my screen is visible to all of you. The link is there in your chat box. So if you go here and scroll down, you'll come across various subjects. Ours is English. You click English, then a window opens like this. 
there are quite a lot of papers not pertaining to igbu but then there are quite a quite a lot of topics which are similar so paper 10 literary criticism and theory would sound similar to what you have as mag5 so click that modules would come in a little bit more than what you have for mag5 but you can have an extended reading okay so aristotle's poetic concept and analysis of tragedy for example just for an example for demonstration i'm choosing this so whatever options you choose from whichever menu you will come across three options the first one is called e text you can download it by clicking this if you want or print that or simply scroll down and read you could see that most of these e texts are basically pdfs prepared by distinguished professors from various central universities university of delhi university of hyderabad jnu and so on and so forth it ranges from say 10 to 15 to 18 pages it gives an overview a holistic overview of all aspects related to that topic from an examination point of view especially if you are a rote learner somebody who learns things by heart this would be of immense help to you the second option is something we never follow learn more can also be called as references further reading materials so so again one thing good about this is it's not only about books it also includes youtube links or website links and so on and so forth so you may explore that if you are interested to research further into those topics the third one are actually lectures self learning is basically a 30 to 40 minute lecture again by one of the university central university professors who would be talking on this wide range of topics somehow my network is not playing this video but then believe me these uh, infinet servers have these videos which you could access yeah uh, yukta ji that's an entirely different discussion altogether we'll have it some other day because we are all l2 learners of english we are not native learners of english so we don't have those stimulating english speaking environments even if we have that environment we have our own inhibitions to deal with and often we fall short in uh, expressing ourselves that's a different discussion altogether we'll do that some other time again let me take you to another page this is a youtube page i promise you that in terms of content not in terms of style not in terms of simplification not in terms of the analogies that i bring in this is one of the best lecture series on literary criticism and theory by dr paul fry from yale university the link is there in your chat box you may go and uh, discover all those videos maybe discovering those videos may also encourage you to skip my classes because they are quite complete in themselves they are quite interesting they are quite rich and they'll give you a lot of facts which i generally don't i end up making these analogies and digressions and so on so there are quite a lot of people who don't like me because i don't give you notes i don't give you condensed information i i try to make you think which is a crime in the academy so yeah so that's something uh, you can depend on if you want i hope all of you know these portals where you would find um, mag5 assignments and previous year question papers so this is the mag5 assignment link and uh, when it comes to previous year question paper again you have this page called uh, yes igno help center web services dot igno dot com don't get carried away by fake websites there is the site called web services dot igno dot ac dot in i am just sharing one link with you you may explore the rest if you feel like this is not about mg5 whatever papers you have to study you can go back and trace the 
previous year question papers and uh, previous year uh, study materials. So I'm coming to that, Preeti ji. In Swayam, you have a course on literary criticism and literary theory run by Dr. Shamala. She is from Mercy College, Palakkad, which is again in Kerala. Dr. Shamala runs an entire course, MOOC course on literary criticism and theory. If you want to explore that, you may feel free to explore that as well. Again, not in terms of literary criticism and theory, but then for an extended reading, you may also refer to the site called Maxter.com. Maxter includes quite a lot of magazines and newspapers, which can be accessed if you have the subscription. Well, they may say subscription is for, let's say, uh, 1000 rupees for a month. You need not do that. You simply pick a paper, add that to the cart. It may cost 10 rupees. I already have a subscription, so I can't add that. So you add that to the cart. It may cost you 10 rupees. The moment you go to the cart, they'll show you a subscription option of 49 rupees for three months. So somewhat 60 rupees for three months. So all these books is quite uh, useful. Uh, you can search even competitive exam materials. For instance, something like Pratyogita Darpan, for instance. You could see this on my left. Or UGC Net JR of Coaching Books. You can access them for free. Academia.edu or Scribed or Scopus Journal, Index Journals are a different category altogether. I'm not discussing that because that's more pertaining to research. And unfortunately, IGNO doesn't focus on your research aspect. You don't have a dissertation, you don't have a viva uh, we don't prepare you for your PhD research. So for that reason, and also because we only have 20 hours, I don't want to digress to the uh, academic publishing part. I'd rather let you explore that on your, your own. Again, for those who have been asking for the MEG uh, IGNO lecture series, this is the page. You can go and find all these lectures on MEG2, MEG3, MEG4, MEG5, and so on. This is my thumbnail. Seems good, isn't it? Okay, so you can go and have a look at this. You can explore this if you want. The link is there in your chat box. Though not related to MEG5, another link or another uh, you know reference that I would like to give you is Crash Course Theater. If you if you have opted for MEG2. This is one link that I would like you to explore. Explore. It includes the evolution of drama onwards, and it deals quite a lot of topics that would be of interest to you from various papers that you come across. Again, I am happily sharing you the links. I used to share the manga classics and other stuff in my previous classes, but then I have been reminded as a responsible researcher to stay away from pirated sources. I'm sure most of you would be familiar with the Z library platform, which is also called as BOK or Libgen. So most of the learners who cannot afford to buy books or to afford library subscriptions, try to download PDFs from these sites. PDFs are available for free. Most of the books, classics are available for free. Uh, for the time being, I'm not talking about that because I'm being recorded, monitored, and as a responsible researcher, as well as teacher, I shouldn't be uh, encouraging you to read pirated materials. But it goes without saying that if you know this, you may go that far. So that's as simple as that. And uh, these are some materials that I would like you to explore if and when you get time. And I would also like to briefly mention a series called History of English Literature. If you want to master MEG, if you want to call yourself a, yourself a postgraduate in English literature, you should have a thorough proper understanding of the history of English literature. There are quite a lot of books which would equip you to do that. A really difficult book that most of the people speak about is that of Edward Albert. Edward Albert has written a book called 
the history of english literature but if you or if your language is not up to the mark or if you can't read much read a page and a half of edward albert you will sleep you will doze off so don't read edward albert again there are quite a lot of series including that of arthur compton rickett they have a book on history of english literature then there is this guy whom i always recommend called paul poplarski i may have spelled him wrong please double check there is a book by him called english literature in context english literature in context it's a book i would recommend you to read also because some of you at least some of you would be net aspirants having a thorough read of english literature in context would help you crack net better that's a book that i have recommended to quite a lot of students they have come back to me and thank me again i'm referring to igno learners quite a lot of people look at igno learners with contempt because you are distant learners you don't get to uh, get exposed to proper lectures a lot of people think your your learning is incomplete but trust me there are quite a lot of learners who score 90 plus for mg5 i i remember a student of mine mrityunjaya indoria she scored 95 out of 100 for mg5 would you believe it it is possible if you have the language if you have a proper understanding if you can apply you can score good marks 90 95 is possible in igno it's not possible in the other academy so work towards that i'm not saying marks are everything if you are a 50 person 60 person totally fine uh najya that's what i said in the beginning part of my lecture these lectures are recorded it may take some time to come and get uploaded on the channel but then it will definitely be available in the public domain yeah regarding points i think you are talking about bullets i assume uh priti ji the moment you have a lot of yes, yes so i was talking about bullets and that using a lot of bullets like in okay. mg5 the moment you have opted for a post graduate course you are supposed to write in paragraphs you are supposed to know how to divide your ideas into different paragraphs the moment you write an essay you must be aware of the structure of an essay an introduction five to seven to nine body paragraphs and a con- one or two conclusion paragraphs concluding paragraphs and every paragraph begins with something called a topic sentence so as a post graduate learner you are expected to be aware of these things the moment a bullet appears you lose marks let's say you write an essay in eight or nine paragraphs you may get let's say 15 out of 20 you write bullets you get 5 to 8 out of 20 it's as simple as that there is no straight and fast rule but from my understanding that's how it is if you are a post graduate learner stay away from shortcuts shortening forms abbreviations bullets and so on it's not only about bullets it's also about short forms don't use texting language don't use this and you write a and d don't put the initial thing and uh, similarly don't bring in abbreviations unless they are that popular and accepted okay so i was trying to bring something else in between and this question came I was trying to tell you that crash course theater is something I exposed you to, and uh, what is it that I was trying to address? Yes, YouTube channel. This would be uploaded. Yeah, <clears throat> history of English literature series. So try and read the history of English literature series. That will give you a different sort of an enlightenment. It will give you answers to all the questions you, that you asked me in the beginning of this lecture. How to understand this concept? How to uh, have this intertextual allusion? How to decode that? This would give you. a way a light again if that doesn't the next thing that you should read is glossary of literary terms when i say glossary it simply means dictionary of literary terms i am not referring to mh abrams glossary alone there are quite a lot of interesting glossaries there is an oxford glossary there is one by routledge uh, i think it's titled 
uh, Oxford Book of Critical Terms or Technical Terms or something like that. So for every such concept, you would find Oxford Routledge Companions, Harvard Editions. Uh, again, another book that I uh, quite reverently remember is a book titled The Literary Salad by late Dr. Madhukar Rao, who was my professor in Maharajas. He was a legendary Shakespearean critic, Dr. Madhukar Rao. This book, The Literary Salad, is still available in online public domain. It's a little bit costlier, but as a student of English literature, I would recommend you to read that at least once. It would take you to unknown pastures of, of words that you never knew, of concepts that you have never read, of possibilities that you had never thought of. Dr. Madhukar Rao was a legend. Even in his 80s, late 80s, the way he taught Hamlet. Well, I, 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 I never think I can replicate that even in my 50s. Such a legendary genius, Rao Sar was. Let me take a moment remembering him. I'm what I am because of people like him. So yes, that's another book that I could recommend to you. Quite a lot of glossaries that you could go back and read. Take five words and read. Five concepts in that glossary. By the time you complete your two years, you'll be masters in real sense. All right. So I think that sums up the lecture. We have 10 to 12 minutes for your Q&A for your doubts, queries, comments, feedback, or simple conversations. We needn't always be serious. You could simply open up and say, what is the movie that you went to last and what are your opinions on that? This is a space for you to speak. Uh, again, Yukta was talking about not getting opportunities to speak in English. This is our arena. This is the space. And it is for you to grab this opportunity with both hands. Fear not about Excuse the mistakes. Me? Yes, please, go on. Could you please repeat that uh, Yale lecturer's name? Yale University. Yes, I, uh, Dr. You... Fry, Dr. Paul Fry. His introduction Paul to Paul Fry. Paul, okay, Paul okay. P A U L. Again, I can share the link okay. in the chat box if you want. Okay, so before opening the floor again, yeah, Aheliji, just give me a minute because there is a question. Let me just address that. Tomorrow, when you come, first of all, try to figure out the difference between literary criticism and literary theory. That's point number one. That's homework number one for you. Two, tomorrow I'll be dealing with classical literary criticism. Aristotle, Plato, Longinus, Horace, and then a little bit of the beginnings of English literary criticism. So try to do a background work. You, 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 it's totally okay even if you don't read. You come to my class with a blank state of mind, the tabula rasa that uh, um, T.S. Eliot speaks about. Come without anything, listen to me, then go back and read. Even that's fine with me. Okay. The homework is very simple. I've already told I already typed that. Literary criticism versus literary theory. Classical literary criticism. Again, if you want, you can try to figure out the difference between classical versus classic. Simple, simple homeworks. Won't take too much of your time. Yes, Aheli Guhaji, you may, you may proceed now. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, I wanted to ask that uh, while studying our blocks, from our IGNU materials, what is the proper way in which we can uh, learn uh, MEG file? Like, uh, is there any proper way or we can uh, just, I mean, uh, do you have to study the blocks in the serial way or we can do it in haphazard way? What is the proper way in which we can study MEG file? Okay, let me, let me, let me try to recontextualize that once more. I have already answered that during my lecture, but let me again try to put this into perspective. Not only MEG5, whichever paper you study, how do you put it into perspective depends solely on you. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Are you a read-write learner? Are you a visual learner? Are you a kinesthetic learner? It's something that you have to figure out. 
And once you figure that out, work along those lines. If you are not a read write learner, no matter which book you read, it's not going to benefit you. You may have to depend on videos like that on Crash Course Theater, for instance, or animation videos. So you have to identify what connects with you. There are learners who listen to lectures and they can simply go and write. They don't need to read. You might be an auditory learner. In that case, go listen to as many lectures as possible. So figure that out. Again, in a very stereotypical way, the proper channel of, of approaching any paper, including MEG5 is go back to core textbooks. I'm not talking about study materials. I'm not talking about igno blocks. I'm talking about proper texts. Jacques Derrida, Structure, Sign and Play of Linguistics. Or Ferdinand Isosur, Coastly General Linguistics. Uh, T.S. Eliot, Tradition and Individual Talent. Matthew Arnold, The Function of Criticism. So go to those essays and books and read that completely. As I've already told, it's impractical in the modern era. You can't read all those things. So pick, yes. choose and read. Pick, choose and read. There are quite a lot of learners who I know are not at all good in studies. What do they do? They pick all these concepts. They go to the web a week or two before the exams. They learn this from Wikipedia. They learn this from Spark Notes, E Notes, blah, blah, blah. And they write well and they score good marks. If it works for you, that works for you. If the lectures works for you, it works for you. If the videos works for you, it works for you. So it depends on what you are comfortable with, whether you get the access to it and whether that works for you. And again, only you can figure that out. I, I, I have no role in helping you figure that out. Maybe I can suggest, for instance, if you come to me and say, sir, I'm a visual learner, suggest me some visuals that I can depend on. I can probably suggest you some visual libraries. Or did you have your coffee today evening? Or uh, what did you have for your lunch today? I mean, that's fine. Just sir, to be we, yes, go. Sir, we want to know. Sir, we want to know about you, sir. All right, that is a good, 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 good thing that I forgot. I'm, I'm really apologetic that I didn't go on a proper self introduction about myself. I only told you that I'm Anand Krishnamurti. I'm from RC Kochin and I'm an academic counselor. I hear with share my professional. No, sir, not from profession, from your beneath what you are actually. Uh, I didn't get your question. Are you talking about my artistic interests or uh, what is it that you want to know? Idealistic. Well, it's it's complicated into various arenas. I, I am quite fond of writing. I'm quite fond of films. I'm quite fond of theater, theater arts in particular. And uh, I like visual culture. I appreciate a lot. I'm into ELT, English language teaching. I have been working on my research, PhD research or along those lines. And then I am quite excited whenever it comes to teaching. And that's one reason why I stick to IGNO every single time against all odds. And uh, I've shared my profile in the chat box for those who want to go and have a look. Uh, the only thing that's missing in the profile is that currently I'm doing my PhD research. So that's missing the profile, but otherwise you would get my entire Jatak in that uh, profile. Sir, uh, so what would have to do to do PhD and like that? Well, that's again a larger debate. We'll probably address that at a later point of time. To keep it very simple, in order to get enrolled for a PhD, uh, if you don't have net, then you'll have to write entrance examinations and top the rank list and uh, pray that you have a guide. Or you should have NET or JRF. If you have JRF, you can easily walk into any central universities and provided seats are vacant, you could grab it. You will get a fund on a monthly basis and uh, you could complete your PhD in a very successful way. I don't have much qualification. You still have time. Excuse just me? Just taking baby steps. Yes, Param. Can we get one sentence description of each... Uh, Ideas of criticism, like romanticism, like classical, like uh, post-structural, structuralism, like that. Each one uh, description uh, you, in you, one sentence. You, you, you go to glossaries, any of these glossaries, Oxford Companions or Outlet Companions, 
you will come across contents detailed notes on these topics not one sentence but maybe four or five sentences okay sure. okay thank you thank you yeah sir you had suggested that uh, there are some visual uh, videos or visual libraries of uh, if it's possible you can share some of those for criticism yeah part. uh i'll do that as our sessions progress unfortunately okay, unlike sir. drama or novels uh, for criticism it is not that much but at least we can depend on some lectures to say the least excuse me yes please uh, one more doubt about this meet program meet uh, if you close the video close the mobile can we recover it uh, later is it possible uh, what is the method to re recover the thing, links everything you gave before well i am afraid that is not possible but as uh, i told you the video will be available in youtube uh, regarding the links you will have to copy paste it and save it randomly uh, as i do that i don't okay, think that is okay, a okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay but that can, but, then, the but then that could also be my technological illiteracy i'm not that good at technology so maybe i am wrong as well yes monica ji yes sir i am back sorry i have to leave that time for some urgent work so i would suggest you can share, you can share the links with me i will share in every group uh, regarding what they are talking of the links you have shared because i have you had shared previously also but i had not uh, got it at yeah. uh, so i could ha i have to search for them so that may take some time so whatever you have shared so you can just forward it to me i'll just uh, forward it in the groups for them if they feel yeah, sure 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 definitely right, and, uh, right. what a problem and sir like uh, that fine arts was asking about you i just want to add one thing that uh, mm -hmm. since i attended your first class in uh, i think uh, 2020 in january session you when you came yeah. i was totally blank i was i was not having any like many of uh, them are still here who are just blank i was like all that i was having a fear of pandemic five uh, it was an uh, like a very typical uh, subject being from science background and so but uh, Being in contact with you, it uh, made a big up for me because uh, after that I attended at least three or four sessions of yours, like I. And now I got all my concepts clear. And uh, because of your uh, uh, your teaching, I could deliver it to many of the students of Meg Mentors. Uh, we conducted crash courses twice, and uh, I was very much confident of uh, doing the. because of you because of amar's uh, amarath uh, then bastra and because i attended all the and uh, thanks to you also sir uh, because uh, and i would suggest all of you to be in touch attend his classes and uh, the way uh, sir is teaching will make you get all the concepts and basically the initial videos that you played that uh, really motivate the students to be a part of the uh, this two hours class till the end because your consistency and the intellectual explain uh, examples that you give so that makes it really uh, easy to uh, uh, intercept this subject and uh, like uh, लेगे <laughs> 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 
you haven't seen most of my teachers including dr madhukar rao uh, had you been exposed to their classes i'm sure you would you would rate me you would rather look at me as an underrated fellow because they are they are all really legends and it, i'm just in the shadow of those legends and i just try to do whatever i could within those shared limitations and responsibilities because they have taught me how important it is to teach a learner or to to, to treat a learner as a, as an equal human being more often than not what happens is in the academia people try to show off themselves and in the process forget that the learners are here to make a life out of that they forget that so it is about being empathetic uh, treating them equally and even simple things like have you had your breakfast that matters so it is the small little things that i have learned from these legendary teachers that has made me what i am today and thank you so much for those uh, kind words of reassuring uh, my efforts but then yeah I, i'll definitely try to keep this going thank you and sir the same thing you are motivating within us what you got from your teachers you are delivering us and we hope to deliver it in future thank you for us being yeah dr vc harris used to say dr vc harris used to say that he was a former vc of mg university so dr vc he was also the uh, you know dean of uh, school of letters he used to say that uh, we are not running a solo race we are running a marathon and from us from us the baton is handed over to you and you are supposed to run our legacy it is an immense responsibility and we we really are you know humbled by that uh, you know tall shoes that we are wearing you know dr vc harris or dr engrajan or dr madhukar rao or people like this dr k ayappa panikar these people they have amazed us with the sort of simplicity that they have shown in their life the way they have reached out to people made sure they were there for them and yeah i i would just go on lecturing for another three hours if you if you start asking me about these people yeah so i can see quite a lot of hands raised nanda kumar ji i think you have something yeah uh, this is rajni nanda kumar sir uh, i yeah. just want to know i hope uh, you would be discussing the assignment questions also during your various sessions that will help definitely, us a lot definitely. yeah thank Will you very you? much okay yukta ji do you have a question i could see your hands raised as well so no questions just uh, like appreciating thing for you that i have uh, i came across this word called meaningful learning and for the very first time in online learning i came across to the meaningful learning in just only 50 to 60 minutes so so i just really appreciating your way of teaching that's all thank you so much thank you so much as i told you these kind words may seem to be really simple but then they go miles to motivate us that actually empowers us to come back stronger the next day and maybe give you more it's not that if you don't show praises i won't come back and do the same but then it definitely helps us to go that extra mile so thank you so much for being kind yes aheli ji do you have anything to... yeah you sir go on. yes yeah, sir today's world the real meaning of teaching is lost somewhere because it is just merely transmitting the knowledge and perceiving the knowledge so where few of the teachers are debate yeah maintain the tradition uh, maintain the uh, main like main thing in the teaching so you are one of them thank you thank you so much yes aheli ji you have, you had something i suppose yes so thank you so much for this uh, very informative and enlightening class especially for those uh, who aren't aware about the history and background of literary criticism and theory it was very helpful so thank you so much thank you we have a lot more lined up tomorrow we'll definitely discuss the inception of literary criticism and theory tomorrow yes salman ji Yes, sir. Thank you so much for this wonderful class. It was very interesting, very different in kind. As it's um, uh, even in virtual mode, I I couldn't say that I'm out of words. That in virtual mode we have teachers like this that help us to interact. Most of all, the thing is that the subject gets more and more interesting when we have somebody to uh, motivate us and look to the subject in a different way, because. Uh, from in igno if you know as you have said earlier that uh, uh, from during the time of corona it has been very different platform altogether we, we we have hardly very few minutes to understand and mostly everything is theoretical 
meg 5 being one of those subjects which automatically as i shared in the beginning class beginning of the class as well it is one of those subjects that gets easier as and when we work hard and put down into it so thank you so much for those um, insightful examples um, the, the the links that you have shared many of the things like the books uh, links that you have shared it is really really very helpful sir and uh, and a very enriching audience and as well as i would like to thank monica ma'am as well she is one of those people who helps us get along those links as well as that information without which it would have been really difficult to be and uh, at least answer or talk to you in this fashion thank you so much the pleasure is mine equally let me just part on these words theory is not an end but a means theory basically is a tool and how you look at it how you look into the world with a theory is what makes theory stand or which stand right on that parting note i'd sign off for today see you all tomorrow at 5:30 and i'm sure you are all excited and if i have been able to help you i'm really humbled and equally excited and i would like to repeat let us together embark on this journey towards literary criticism and theory in practice thank you and good night everyone thank you very much thank you sir so much sir we'll meet tomorrow then thank you thank you sir